people who didn't know what that was doing in the first place, right? Yeah, no. I learned my fountain, and I say no that, by observing the side over a period like 1956 to somewhere about late 70s. I haven't seen them in the present existence, you know, the, um, I certainly with the, the, the three sides, but there's been a term of over personnel. Therefore, the way they dance nowadays, if we go up there, is significantly different to the way I saw it. Now, in my time, there were people still who danced from the 30s, still around. And one of the problems I had is that there was a significant difference between the way the old men danced and the young men danced. And the story was that, oh, they changed it every year, which wasn't quite true. They changed it every time they went out. <laughs> because being together was more important than getting it right. <coughs> what was correct for them was that all six danced together. And if one of the chaps on your side had to be deaf and couldn't hear what was happening, didn't know that you'd start until you moved, didn't know what the dance was until you got to the chorus, you just learned to live with it. And if you had an old dancer in the side who did things differently, it was usually easier for five of you to adjust to that one until you gave up. <laughs> <laughs> they could revert back to the way it always used to be done. You know, that sort of character. And then a few years back, I saw the Baptist side dancing at Mayor's Day Avenue. And I suddenly realised that these young men I had grown up with, as it were, were dancing like the old <coughs> men were when I saw them 30, 40 years ago. And that's when I realised, in fact, there is actually a way of dancing Bampton like old men and like young men. And the young men actually just slowly drift from one way of dancing into the other. In fact, they all get taught the same way. In fact, it wasn't the people learned at different times, different leaders, and things, which is what affects most of us. You know, there was a consistency the way they thought. Now that was a great relief. <laughs> right, I could never understand where some of the weird and wonderful things would sort of do. The other thing I have to say is, after 40 years of Morris, I reckon I've seen 400 ways of dancing in Brampton, none of which, other than Binghamton and the States, and uh, I think there's one English side, the Frome Valley, who actually ever looked like Bampton at any time. But talk about copying Bampton, there are three to copy anyhow. You know, so it's difficult. But uh, I mean, you know, people who actually who copy the way, say, Woodley's side of dance are few and far between. Um, and, yeah, now what is, why is this? Well, I think one thing is that this is a unique village where more than one family have the tradition. You know, in other words, more than one person at any one time has been teaching people how to dance. Since the war, Arnold Woodley had taught most of the youngsters who came into Morris, but they were strongly influenced by other dancers around them, so they all varied within themselves anyhow. And the end result is that the tolerance on what you can do is much larger at Bampton than anywhere else. The foremen over the years have never been able to insist on this. Now, in the days that Jinky Wells was around, he wasn't the foreman, he was the musician. You know, the musician was the turn of the century. But being the old hand, who actually, as it were, dated back to the year dot and so on, they had to accept that he'd been around longer and knew more about it. Having said that, he didn't dance like the rest, ever. Right? He never was a good Bampton dancer. He was an extraordinary dancer in his own right. And all the old dancers I talked to said that Jinky Wells never taught anybody, he just criticised. <laughs> for those who are married here, you may understand what that means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of those things. You know, um, so on. And of course, it's live and let live. It's a village. You know? And the trouble of the village is that in a town, if you don't like somebody, you don't have to ever pass them. You can always go down another road. In a village, a one street village like Bampton, no matter how much you dislike them, you're passing them two or three times a day. This is why I have the strange business of the sides who were daggers drawn the first time actually get on with each other socially because they don't have any choice. Still, 
They're coming back to it. Now, what did Arnold do to teach everybody? When he started to learn the step, he used to get people, youngsters to stand on the spot and just hop. And then to kick off the top. Now, what you'll notice as soon as you try and do it, which none of you did, <laughs> is that Bampton, being a, a living tradition in a very peculiar sort of way, is a 20th century way of doing it. Everybody doing it is influenced by the way you remove in the 20th century, which is on the offbeat. Right? The emphasis is on the off. Whereas the classic Morris step is one, two, three, and it's on the strong beats. Right? It's, it's Victorian the way we dance. The way Victorian dancing was done with the emphasis on the strong beats. Right? And the 20th century, that's Bampton, Chipping Camden, Bitford to some extent, are all single step off the beat. Um, I've got to say, well, somebody played me a tune, I realize I'm the musician. <laughs> I apologize for that. Why should I apologize for playing? I've got to get some pleasure out of this with you. Know? <laughs> right, let's uh, get everybody to do a little bit of hopping and then kicking forward, seeing how we go. To their practice life, so at least they get that stuff into their head. Now we all know when you, you do that or see that dance that in fact they switch into one, two, three hops. Uh, now at least since 1919, which is long enough ago to be traditional, uh, um, they've always done the foot up with hop steps. They've not done double steps in the foot up for that length of time, right? The double steps usually creep into the hay, but I think it was described in the 30s as that the varieties of ways of dancing in hay were astronomical. Astronomical meaning things in the, the millions of millions of miles or something like that. Right? And the films that we have of Bampton show that they had a big variety of ways of doing it. In other words, people just sailed off into the bead on the and negotiated the people in front of them as they framed them, right? We have sides like that still, I know. Right. So, what I'm asking tonight is a sort of, uh, to stay with the single step. You know, if it was good enough for uh, the younger Sherald, it's good enough for the rest of us. You know, he's one of those who never adapted. As for starting foot, you know, you may notice they do tend to start now with the left foot. But, um, yeah. Well, Francis Shergo was a right-footed dancer, so for years he didn't have a rule until they were invited to go out to the Albert Hall and they thought they ought to standardise on it. And they had a big row to hear him versus the rest of it, watching the starting foot. So again, for tonight, we don't care. Right? Traditional. Right, no. Face me. Right, in your set. Two bars on the spot. Come on, D. One, two, three, four, and turn to face the other way. One, two, three, face your opposite. One, two, three, four. Right. There's a subtlety in the rhythm which goes di wa di yum ba da yum da 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 yum da di da yum da 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 yum da da da. Try that. One hop, two hop, one hop, two hop, step, one hop, step. Try doing that on the spot. I didn't expect you to learn anything this weekend, but I didn't expect you to end up being a better dancer. <laughs> Famous last words. Well, the one 
one's important bit is you've got to keep the body bouncing all the way through. The being conscious, even on the, the so-called step, it's not a step, it's not a heel on the grain business at any stage. In fact, I do ask, a pious ask for the weekend. I hope that when we're standing up to do something, it was better than ours, there'd be no people standing with their weight on their heels. Right? The body language of being up on your balls of your feet and ready and eager to go is very obvious to me. The body language of relaxing back on your heels and being a flock and so on is also very obvious. And I am so easily depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Face across. <laughs> Half chip. Right shoulders, same rhythm. Go on. Oh, I'm diddle diddle and back in the under diddle diddle da 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 Now, what most of you, some of you did automatically, is that when you get back to the place and you do that jump, move over. So you're now ready to dance down the other side. You're not doing these at an angle. Right, you're going straight forward, back, move across, and straight forward.
there were people who wouldn't dance for Francis, but would dance for Arnold. So he found something while he was able to get uh, a side with plenty of spares that were together. Um, but they didn't dance like the Sherbrooke, all the figures like the Sherbrooke did. In particular, they didn't do the gypsy, they did a back to back. Right? And they did a different sort of hay, which were meters well. So you just do a back to back, which is very much like the half hands, you go across in a sort of, can you face, in a sort of cross like that, then up to your more or less there in a sort of diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, well, yeah. a 32 carat. <laughs> Let's Just try it. This is fun. One, two, three, hop. Basically, it's a side step, and you point with your hand. Yum, ba, da, dee, dee, yum, ba, da, dee. I haven't talked about the swirl of the arms and the back step yet. Don't worry about it. Right? Um, now, one side does it like I would call the normal Morris Hay, i.e., the middles come up to the middle, the tops turn down and go between the people they can see, right? like a normal Morris Hay. Then the other way of doing it, the bottoms turn quickly, eightwards, and follow the middles up so that there isn't room for the tops to go between, and they go right behind you in a sort of cast. <laughs> <laughs> so if you the bottom, you just point quickly and go up to the top. So let's just try a whole hay like that just for the hell of it. I think I'm being very cynical like that. <laughs> Emphasis 
on a flip, I'm on this young tan in that. That's right, not on the strong beat of the bar. Let's try the figures again while we all think about what it is we'd like to do if only your hands and feet were doing what you think about.
ounces, but 24 to 30 long. Now, there was always a problem that because nobody ever saw the side, saw them normally do more than 15 or 16, including the jigs, on any one occasion. And it does look, when one examines the dance list from Bampton heading to the other places, that a repertoire of things remembered was about twice that of what they actually did. Now, when I talk to modern science, this is not unusual. Uh, all clubs have a large number of dances they could do if pressed. You know, the fact is, there's only a small number they actually practice and do reasonably well. And those two are mutually exclusive. Um, so, there are a lot of Bampton things that, again, examining the repertoire over the years has collected the seen them. Yes, dancers come and dancers have gone from the repertoire for various reasons. Sometimes because they were very satisfactory or too much like another one. <coughs> Or, in the case of Trunkles, because um, <coughs> Jinky Wells couldn't play the tune when required. <coughs> uh, they got him to play other things, and they set it on him playing Shepherd's Hay. You see? <coughs> now, Shepherd's Hay's not the same length as Trunkles, anyhow, so they had to adapt the dance. <laughs> At least, they must have adapted the dance, let's put it that way. Although, none of the people like Alex Wixie, who I, Alex Dixie, who I talked to, recognise that they changed anything for anybody. You know, they reckon they did the same thing all the time, but it, you know, you can't dance the four bars and call that six bars long, you know, adapting. But I suspect they didn't actually think it was that way, they just danced to whatever the tune was. So let's look at trunkles to start with. Now it's a corner dance. Right? So the first corners, which we will call our first corners in your set, they basically I'm going to do two side steps moving to the left and to the right. And then the back step with the swirl arms back to your face. <coughs> then before anybody else, that's a salute bit, before anybody else has to go, you need to cross the diagonal of the four side steps, right? One, two, three, four, and everybody does four plain cables. One, two, three. This, at least, is the way that um, Alec Dixie explained it to myself when you were at Russell. Uh, is that enough explanation for everybody? Yeah. Yeah, the time you gives you a And you all know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Now there's another thing they also did, is that in fact they made the foot up longer. Right? Now what was interesting about making the foot up longer is that they were probably stealing the figure from up the road at that point. <laughs> Face up. First pair out there does a foot up. Cast to the bottom and face down. Come on, cast to the bottom. Then the next pair dance their foot up. Cast straight to the bottom into their middle face. Right? And then you cut, do a foot up, turn on the spot. And then we do foot down. Come back to where you started, that's up the eight side now. And so on. Now we've all sort of. Now the next thing is that the chorus, the corners, in fact, is just a straight four bars across, two side steps of four plain capers. In other words, we dash. Now you'll notice if you ever bother to read Sharp's book that he describes that you can do either the salute bit, which we did in Trunkles to start with all the crossing, and what they did at one time, according to that, actually, was in fact, they put the two together, it was done like trunkles. But over the years, that's got boring, and they've set up day to do a sort of rather long foot up, then very quick course, right? Just the four bars crossing, let's try it. <laughs>
Besides, haven't invented much bantam because the living things ain't there and they seem to be quite good at getting on with it themselves anyhow. Which means, you know, new tunes come in uh, and I have to say new dances have been revived <coughs> in the sense that there are dances that were talked about that some of the old dancers remembered it being mentioned before and they'd come up with something rather like it probably was but satisfying for them to do the way it is all the time. And that I think is part of the tradition. As I said, it seemed very obvious that the old repertoires from the order, let's say, 15 to 18 dancers, including Jews, which modern sides seldom do, I might say, um, with many other dancers and remembered, they're either dancers that were on their way out or possibly dancers on their way in. Uh, and that means the tradition and the modern clubs are very, very similar in that sort of way. I don't know why we'd imagine they'd be different, because they're just ordinary people in both cases doing you know, what is fairly natural. You don't get pinned down. But as I say, there aren't many Bampton dancers invented from outside of Bampton. Um, I'll teach you a couple now, which I have to say that my side did in front of Bampton men. And they come up after the said, that was wonderful. I'm glad we don't have to do it. Sets of your sets of six or new sets of six? This particular chorus figure is sort of not the thing to learn on a Friday evening, I suppose. But there's no other time this weekend I'll try. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The first thing to start to bring up. Number one and number three cross over with four and six, passing right shoulders. <laughs> Now the people who are in two and four cross the people who are in three and five. Then the people who are now in one and three cross the people who are now in four and six. And then everybody crosses with their opposite. Now you should be halfway round. To get back, we do exactly the same thing. The people who are in one and three cross with four and six. And then two and four cross with three and five. Always pass right shoulders. First down the game. And then cross with your opposite and you're back to where you started. <laughs> Thing. Are you not? You're actually going to turn round on the spot. 
This is guaranteed you to get both giddy and disorientated. <laughs> If you can turn around to spring papers, I should be pleased as well.
just be one another. Right. No, face your opposite. Now, the stepping, that's the first problem. It's rather like made in the middle. You all sidestep to your left, everybody to your left, then to your right, and then two, two spring capers. Now, the problem is you don't do this on the spot. No. When you sidestep to the left, the first corner change places. Sidestepping to the left. Of course. Yeah. One. When you sidestep to the right, the other corner crossover. When you do the two spring capers, the forehead cross all over, do two spring capers turning round, eight. You're eight in the morning. And the middles cross over. You've now changed sides and you dance the first half of half range to go back to where you started. Wow. And being the spine that I am, we then do this side step to the left of the first corner crossing over, side step to the right of the second. Middles cross over. I'm going to do the other half of range.
to the middle and come back through the goal all the way to the other side because we only get three forces and if you duck to through every time you'll end up at the wrong end which is all right if you actually duck into a bit silly bit fun. <coughs> now the chorus is very simple it's spring capers crossing over turning face front and everybody did capers can capers right
I'm sure there's sheep to it. But some set of Roy doesn't like you can't sit next to it. <laughs> <laughs> Those people who want to disappear saying what it is Annika Zero. Sorry, Well, it's traditional at the wantage weekends just to let the small hours appear by sitting and talking along with drinking, of course. Oh, yeah. We stopped a bit earlier than normal tonight because uh, you appreciate that with a crate up there, it actually is quite difficult to uh, enjoy it for very long. And so on. But there are two things I wanted to air this weekend. Uh, the chat. When I say air, I want people to actually tell me how they feel about it. Um, the first problem arises is really whose dancers are they? Those who've read the book, um, The Imagined Village, I appreciate that's a bit one-sided, the way it puts it, but it emphasises how the collectors, Sharp and so on, when they collected, they fed nothing back to the people they got it from. They saw that it's theirs, and they organised the copyright, and they made not fortunes, because you can't make fortunes out of folk, but whatever did came out, you know, was their own income. They didn't actually feed anything back at all. In fact, Sharp was very keen to keep everybody else away from his sources, really. You know, there are many reasons for that, which I don't really want to debate. But there was that aspect of it that's been made, you know, no feedback. Now, more recently, there has been uh, a number of people, some of them I used to think of as friends, who have been fussing about who actually owns the dancers they've collected. You know, now that's another problem. You see, um, if you've actually worked with a number of people um, to get a dance together, but you in fact have put it together and talked to the people and so on, you know, who is it where it owns the dance? Who should get some benefit from it? Who should be asked permission to use it? Is it where? Finally, of course, and that's why we've had the sort of session we've had tonight, it's teams like me pick up dancers from everybody. In fact, I boast of being the Robin Hood of Morris dancing. <laughs> I steal the dancers from the good sides, the rich sides as it were, and give them to the poor ones. And I've chucked around the world. Well, poor thing. Shakespeare's given us more dancers than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point. But the point being in it, it in the end, it comes that, uh, yeah, there are a lot of dance notations in circulation which have an origin to me. Um, Tony Barron edited them together and was flogging them through the CDS in the States. And they only published in the States because over there the Morris world is a bit thin on the grain and actually needed material and so on. And I think everything that was published was 20 or 25 years old. It's all old material and so on. Uh, no fuss about it. But there are people in England who actually started to, to say, hey, you know, I put the effort, I have the intellectual right. Now, you know the copyright laws in this country. They are, legally, if you see a performance and write your own notation, that notation is your copyright. If you make a video of somebody else, that video is your copyright, not that of the team. That means if it's your copyright, you can exploit it how you like. Can I, can I, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I always understood that if you videoed a performance, you could not repeat that performance in public without acknowledging or paying the copyright of the original performance. Otherwise, I could video yeah. prints on a stage and broadcast it on the television without paying him a penny. Sorry, the artist. I'm not sure. What? Only if you declare it beforehand that you're not to do it. Yeah. So that's why they always say in programmes the technical no photography. So 
Mm -hmm. By buying a ticket, you've agreed not to take photographs. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so that's it. Yeah. Okay. You see, that, the situation is such that yeah. people have to make no, steps. I, must, I always yeah. believed it was the way you yeah. thought it was, but I thought for performances yeah. it was the other way around. Now, I, for example, have had a lifetime, well, lifetime, 35 years of actually noting dancers, filming and videoing dancers, and I'll say, passing the limited good material I see on, um, <laughs> while accumulating a huge archive of the way it actually is. I mean, I don't care people make mistakes, I don't care really, it's just to say, this side on that particular occasion was like this. And the side all says, ah, oh, we're normally better than that, because he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> you have this wonderful effect on Tim. Oh, well, I know a number of people say, God is right, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, falls down. Yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
yeah, Tim's there. And in the Adderbury case, you know, we have this f fatuous situation of Janet Blunt and her friends having collected the dances over a period of two or three years, and Sharp ignored it all. You know, um, and actually said this chap was very difficult to collect from. He didn't remember anything, and so on. And yet, for the three years up to a few months before he saw them, that people were collecting and with photographs of them actually dancing the movements. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, the uh, manuscripts there are totally different. Mm -hmm. they, do not, they do not compare with each other. Not the blunt. The blunt manuscripts and yeah. the sharp manuscripts are totally different. There's no real cross yeah. You go and see Adderby <coughs> Village dance. As I understand it, they, they've taken a sort, the, the sort, black, blunt and so she noted it this is the way it is and they look different for anybody else's way of doing Adderbury Excuse me. and yet what they do seems consistent with the manuscript uh, now we have that sort of problem so can you trust the collector you know? now my own experience of seeing Chipping Candle the first time you know was this is absolutely incredible and I wrote it down and they did it you see when I filmed them a year or so later, they didn't actually do what I'd written down, because I got it wrong. You know? And one of the problems I, I have introduced to the last one, really, is actually trying to persuade people that people's manuscripts and so on, being different from what's published, have a, an authority of their own. <coughs> so, you know, when the motivation was much saying, here's another way of looking at it, you know, try and break this bond, you know very well that collectors, in fact, um, you know, they do it in good faith, but they don't necessarily get it right. So that's another problem, I think, of actually giving the responsibility, as it were, with um, ownership to the collector of actually saying, well, how authentic is, is it? But if you really read about the folk song collectors and what they do to folk song words and things like this, you wonder how much trust you'd have put in bearing gold and so on. You wouldn't do it today. interesting that it's only if it's filtered through other people is it important that there are differences. By that I mean um, when Brian Shepherd was dancing with me in the Nanbury team, what we did and what I still do was good enough for him. But when he when we disagreed enough, there was reason enough for him to go away and find another way of doing it. And finding a reason for doing it. So if one takes the sharp manuscripts and looks at the blunt manuscripts, I think you come to the way that we do the dance. And if you only look at blunt, in Brian's eyes, you find the way that they do. So you have to have a reason for doing it. And our reason is for doing yeah. it differently. So well. don't don't look at contemporary situations as being the own the only way. But many, many, many. Look, there are people here, though, from sides which have their own dancers. You know, how do you feel about other people doing them? Are they asking? Yeah. It depends. <laughs> 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 See, whether it's strange. Speak up loud enough so the, the old uh, video can hear you. <laughs> 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 no, it depends the, on the attitude, because I mean, we, we, we've got our own canon of dances from Chieford, and, and, and there's always big controversy about certain dance that people like to dance as Upton, which if you look at any manuscript, is nothing like what people dance because they're dancing to a greater or lesser extent our dance as a rule, which was a made up dance by Jeff Hughes. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and we've, we, we've evolved a tradition from that, we've got other dances in that style. Um, and and then if, if people want to do them, that's fine. In fact, we, that, that's great, but we, we'd like it that knowledge that it's, it's our dance is not, oh, this is something that was collected 80 years ago. But that's not deliberate. Everywhere. It's ignorance. Most well, people call it the Upton Bar yeah. Seven yeah. Stick Dance because there, that's there is, the way they were taught. There, there is a lot of ignorance true. about things, which is okay. I mean, you can, you can educate people. But there, there is also a sort of stubborn streak you tend to find in some people that, oh, we can't possibly, we've been, well, we'll be doing the Stick Dance and we call it Upton, so we're going to do that. Never mind that you told us that it's other one. Yeah. Uh, we, do, we don't often get people dancing about our dances, of course. Uh, and we quite like it if they did, because it would sort of uh, spread it about mm. a bit. 
But I think most, the majority of people learn dances from the way they were taught by someone who yeah. says, this is, this is it, this is up to, this is whatever. Yeah. And um, not many go to the manuscript. Yeah. And if you do afterwards, I mean, for a start, there's a variety of interpretation. And do you suddenly stop dancing something that you, in faith you, you thought was a traditional dance? I think we probably do up to the chinkle way, but I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah. No, no, we do ching for the Upton major. <laughs> <laughs> it does help. It's it always an interesting for a variety. Do you dance so it the same way now as you did when it was invented? Right. Um, now then. It was invented sort of 1963 or something like that. Uh, we, it has changed a bit since what Jeff broke down. Um, can I bore you? Uh, uh, it started out. It, it started out. Possibly some of the confusion was that um, Chinkfu had started not that long before that, and um, Peter Boyce, who was one of the founders, used to dance down at Western Super Mare, whomever they were down there. And so when Chinkfu was formed, they had his, his side up from there as, as guests for a day or a weekend or something, and they did the Upton Stick dance, and. A couple of years after that visit, a lot of uh, people decided, uh, well, this is fun what we're doing, but we want something a bit different. What can we do? And I thought, what was that silly dance that they not did two years ago, or whenever it was? And, uh, and I thought, oh, we can't remember. And Jeff Hughes sort of took a couple of bits out, remembered out of the Upton dance. Um, Litchfield Cross and Turn, uh, a diagram thereof, which he interpreted uh, as how he thought it should go, and then found out that it was totally different from the actual Litchfield Cross and Turn, which is interesting because it proves that notation can be very confused. Um, and basically put together these dance, and it was uh, sort of uh, definitely supposed to be our own and different because uh, it wasn't up, and it was never. Only about the, the only yeah, idea really was the sort of yeah. pay on the side business. But in a sense, so what? I mean, well, <laughs> yes and no. But, well, what it? happens is uh, basically you've got, you've got perfectly good dance as notated, which I've seen several people do, uh, with, uh, and looks reasonably the same, the Upton dance. And there's our dance, which is our dance and is not Upton, and I don't mind people doing it at all. And I can't do anything about it anyway. <laughs> One has to be a little pragmatic about it. But, um, basically, what is being danced when it's our dance is it, 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 it's our dance. It's not the Upton dance, and it's it, it, it's it's it didn't come from Upton. It, it but but at some point, at some point, somebody asserted that it came from Upton, and that somebody was either in a position where they were influential enough to make that assertion stick or it, it progressed by some folk process as the Upton dance. At yes. some point, somebody says, this is Upton upon seven, and you learn it this way, look how Chingford do it. And either so deliberately or... I wanted to ask, well, how did your dance become known as the Upton upon seven? Yeah, I mean, it's the tune. Yeah. I mean, well, presumably, the the Chingford called it at the Upton upon seven stick dance. No. No. It was, it was, well... That's Which one now the, the original Chingford Stick Dance. It was originally known as the Stick Dance. Yes. Precisely because it wasn't the Upton one, so it was just the Stick Dance. Yeah. That was the first, uh, our first foray many years ago into own dances before such things were trendy. Um, what we've done since is do a lot of other things in. But in that the particular style. dance has spread all the way around the world. Yes, it's difficult. I mean, one thing that I was just doing the thing about somebody with a sort of strong authoritative view. Because once anybody <coughs> picks up a dance and teaches it somewhere else and tells somebody that that's what it is, then those six people or whatever will go out with that idea. And because they heard it first that it was that, the likelihood is that that's what they will believe. And it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. Right. So I, think we're, I think we're missing two central points about the word folk, like folk dance and folk music. One thing is that it develops organically comes from people and therefore the way it develops is haphazard, chaotic, people move around, they move around 
far more than they did in the past because of modern transport. So you get this movement of, of ideas. And the other thing, in my view, def the definition of folk, either folk music or folk dance, is that it belongs to no one. It just belongs to everyone. And that's why we go to folk clubs to listen to music. And we don't go to performances to hear people perform work out of a book with a, with a copyright. You know, it's the freedom of everyone to go to a folk club and sing any folk dance, because it doesn't belong to anyone. And even in Elizabethan times, I'm told, you had the two things going in parallel. You had folk dances that were there and were written by Anonymous <laughs> sometime in, in the past, and people just sung or danced them. And then they started publishing broadsheet music, and that was copyright, and people copyrighted, and people made money out of it. And the two things still run in parallel today. You get popular music, which people make money out of, com a commercial thing, and you have folk music, which comes from the people, and I think it shouldn't be anyone's well, property. If, if we follow that line, they're they're always, always intertwined. I'm sh yeah, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that at all, but I think... It's that implies that a side, a moral side, does a public performance, and somebody feels moved to copy mm -hmm. you know, the, the concepts and so on, but by doing the public work, you're really giving them carte blanche to do what they want. Yeah. 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 I think you have that to come Why are the dances important in that sense? What's important in terms of what happens next year um, is the performances. And people use all sorts of different material, and sometimes they might develop their own. And sometimes they might think they'd be producing somebody else's, but they're not because they're doing it their own way anyway. And in reality, what the audience will be aware of isn't a dance as reproduced in the way that they're aware of, um, you know, if somebody goes and plays Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, then you know it's Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And it might be a, a particular <coughs> interpretation of it. But that, it's not like that with dances. You're looking at a whole performance. I mean, the emphasis on who owns the dance seems to me a bit misleading because actually right. the, the, the dances don't matter. The issue is who owns the performance, and the answer should be the team that's doing it. And what they use as raw material for that actually wouldn't think to be bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, you might argue that the only reason that they label it as Beethoven's Ninth is because people will pay money for Beethoven's Ninth. I mean, if it, if it wasn't the fact that people were going out and saying, I'd like to listen to Beethoven's Night, let's see what this bunch are doing, they might as well call it anything they like, but they don't, because people, the people understand and know the music by its, by its title, by its reputation, and they will buy a performance by a particular group because they feel that they do it particularly sympathetically or particularly well. And I think that's very much the same in the, in, in the Morris world, is that you don't look at it and say necessarily that um, you know they can call it what they like, but uh, you know at the end of the day, a lot of people will say, "Well, hang on a second, this is made of the mill. Let's go and see this group. Let's go and see them, watch them do the dance." And the fact is that I'd like to see them do Lasse Richmond Hill because it's got leapfrogs in it. You know, it's, there, it's, wasn't there a case with Baker, mm -hmm. all things you know, slightly different from Crosswalls, where the important thing about Baker isn't the dance. The important thing is that they spend all day doing it, and it's seven miles. And it's a totally ridiculous thing for anyone to actually want to do, but they keep doing it. Oh, yeah. But they actually had quite a barney with the E of DS about their dances, um, and sort of said that they are they were their copyright, and they didn't want anyone else doing them. So although the really important thing, you couldn't possibly be Bake Up unless you did something like their Seven Mile Trudge. But it doesn't always snow in Lancashire. Should it? It rains, not. But um, you know, the fact that it, the performance <coughs> and the occasion is really the most important part. But the performers themselves see the dances to be something very special to themselves, and that's that was sort of back in the twenties or something that happened. I can't remember, but it was. No, well, you know, the last time we wanted, you know, James mm. Barn, we did bake up. Mm. Mm. Uh, yes, I did receive abusive letters. And Tessa has been off, and aren't we, our own, aren't we our own worst enemies in the sense that we always want to give it an identification? We've all yeah. done it. Mm. Every, everyone stands up and said, this dance is from such and such. This dance is from such and such. And we've even got, you know, do we not question that? 
Because, yes. I mean, well, we, should, we, we should be turning around in questions, surely, because the dance comes from Adelaide. But you see, it doesn't, because it comes from the Morton family. If we, if we had a hands-off the tradition attitude so that we never did, never saw Bampton, Headington, Abingdon, Camden and so on, yeah. you know very well that our idea of Cotswold Morris would be totally distorted because the 20th century Morris is not the way of what Sharp published and what we'd all be doing if we didn't know anything else. And my attitude all would be, it is important, at least at workshop level, to actually meet all these things. Mm. So you have some experience of it. Mm. You know, that's why everybody should try a long sword dance and a rapper and things like this, you know, just to feel it from the inside. There is a difference since the, the late 70s, really, in that there are now publications in the Morris world. And uh, you can actually um, publish works if you so desire and wish them to go out on it. For example, uh, the, the back beat that we've done at Golden Star, uh, I published some of those dances. Largely because I, I, I wanted them to be recorded, whether they uh, mm. and it was then open for anyone to take, as far as I'm aware, and one other side I know actually dances in. That's not particularly important. Um, in the case of, of, of Chingford, um, in 63, you didn't have the option if you wanted to uh, of actually publishing something. Um, well, wasn't any means. Well, I mean, it's well, easy if you've got a Morris publication. Now well, he's going to be read by Morris uh, to record something for posterity. And I think, in, if nothing else, it's interesting for. I mean, what would we give now to come across a manuscript of someone who wrote down what? Uh, Yep. Lee Field was doing in the 1850s. The equipment the copper I think in a hundred years' time, if Morris is still going, they will be interested in seeing what we actually did now. Uh, and uh, personally, I don't care who dances it. I, I, I would take it as a battery. And, and anyway, it, it, it spurs ideas. The way that it is done and even notated down, if anyone does start to copy it, it, it immediately yeah. starts to change, depending yeah. on the style no. of that side. The the well, is there anybody else here who's actually composed dances for their side? You yeah. have a certain view. Mm. Yes. Yeah. We would argue that we've composed dances, or not me personally, but for, for Bartra Bedlam. And um, to be honest, I think that a side that sticks to a tradition or a way of doing things which is consistent within the side. Typically, people don't steal the dances. They steal ideas from the dances, yes. Yes. but they can't repeat our dances because they're, they're doing two or three different traditions and they want to slot it into their way of doing things. Mm. So, I mean, there's no patent on ideas. You can only patent the actual mechanics of, uh. of the way that it's done. So, you know, most people, you know, they, they can steal... I, I, we do it. You see a good dance, right? Like that's what that's why we're all here this weekend, right? We're hoping, <laughs> we're hoping we'll get ideas and we'll go back and we'll put them into dances and it will be more enjoyable for us and hopefully more enjoyable for the audience at the end of the day. And and, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah, that's very true. When, when people actually uh, produce a, a a dance or arrange a dance, nobody's actually starting off with a, a clean sheet of paper. You've all seen Morris dance in one form or another, yeah. so you're bound to be influenced. There's no way you can actually never seen a Morris dance in your life or any form of dancing to suddenly produce a new and a form of sort of movement. There are a limited number of ideas as well. That um, speed the plow that you taught us this evening yep. is very similar, although not quite the same, as a movement we came up with one of our Molly dances for the ship. Um, and I'm quite convinced that people in different areas, within the limitations of perhaps six yeah. people or whatever yeah. they're set, are quite likely to come up with yes. similar ideas. Yeah. I mean, uh, this happens in, in another field that I work in. I've done this where I've had this brilliant idea, and you know, two months later, I'm in the magazine, and there it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there is well, only <laughs> that particular dance figure is. It, I don't think it's in Playford, but it's in one of the Bat era dances. So it's been this really neat idea for about 300 years. Yeah. This, doesn't stop it being a bad dance. This question of ownership of ideas is a very 20th century thing. Mm. If you went back four or five hundred years, you could own material, portable things. 
You could own a book. You could own the rights to publish a book, although you might not be able to control it under those circumstances. But when you come to the 20th century, when in an advanced society we have a very high level of productivity, a lot of people aren't required to produce material. And many folks make their living by producing idea things. And the ownership of ideas <coughs> is very important. Many ideas are transient, and they're designed to be transient. The whole of the pop culture, the fashion world, relies on putting a ring through your nose or having a red telephone. But the person who gets the idea and pushes it first wants to make money from the idea. And the concept of owning an idea is now being taken to such lengths that people are claiming to own knowledge of the genetic structure of a plant or animal. Certain uh, companies in the United States are claiming ownership of wild plants from South America. So that any breeding that evolves from that, the money accrues to them. They're not natives of the country, but they're claiming the ownership by some sort of spurious means of discovery. The people who were there didn't know they were there. The thing is that they might actually protect it. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not very good for people getting access to it, but it might actually protect what is owned. But that's not so purpose. it maintains the diversity. That's I know what you're getting at, but, but it yeah. does yeah. maintain yeah. the diversity. Can, can, can I complete the argument? The purpose of the ownership is financial exploitation. Yeah. Um, Aren't they only doing it think they being have the lawyers who can back it up? <laughs> they're only they're doing remember. it because they think they can get away with it. Um, are we are we being very realistic by saying it? Do these things belong to the dancers who originated them? Do we seriously think that in 1850 the foreman of some <laughs> side in the Cotswolds made it up entirely by himself? It's more than likely he went down the road on one Saturday. He heard someone playing a tune in a pub. He came back and he said, "I heard this tune. It was called something like the Prince is Real." And there's another entirely different version of Princess Royal written. He was absorbing material around him. He had no conscience about taking ideas from other sources, and he was perfectly happy to incorporate them <coughs> into his own dances. Well, music's it's very common, isn't it, across all the old songs? Why is it very common? Well, because there's the there same known known ownership. ownership. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, well the tradition seemed to have no ownership. Why yeah. should we put it in at this level? Exactly. And the, the, the sides used to be quite isolated. There wasn't that much travel. Yeah. But when they well, did see another was a, side, they would pitch their own out of travel. There was a certain amount. But there was a considerable amount. Well, Some people travelled all the time. Yeah, but not not the local Morris side, for example. Yeah. I had the experience of other people saying to sides who went to the workshop, say, do you want the collected dance or do you want the best version I've seen? <laughs> you know, and the answer is always, we want the best. And people know that I teach them the best version I know of a dance. And I come back to see how they've improved it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my side Minden Rose, who do things like the Rose and so on like this. The version we do owes a lot to other sides who've done the dance and worked on the, these dances. Is it, I always say, for us, you know, I mean, we've done it for those people. You go and say, say what, a, what a great way of doing that movement. But you know, the, we do it like that. This know? is the basis of the whole of human endeavour. I mean, the whole of <laughs> science, the whole of progression, it's basically is you build on other people's work. If we had to reinvent everything from scratch, you'd be quick with never get it. an endeavor, and they're not the same. It's no, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I use gave science evolution. as an example of what is done by people, because most people can understand that scientific endeavor has to build on previous work. But it's also true in artistic endeavor, to some extent. It's the basis of evolution as well. Perspective, it's perspective, it's slightly, it's people slightly I mean, better than you know, the last version. The tricks that are learned in the past are used by the people in the present. Yeah, but if I were to take a book by Charles Dickens and rewrite it, he wouldn't thank me for it. Well, he's dead. <laughs> 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 he wouldn't want to own it. Yeah. So, we could argue, well, you see, that the whole of civilization, the whole of this world, is in fact, it was inherent in the Big Bang. <laughs> Therefore, whoever caused the Big Bang actually knew what was going to happen. Only Why hasn't he? But he's not book. claiming anything. Yeah, right. Whoever is first to copyright the Big Bang will own everything. Right. Boy, why would anybody want to own a dance? Well, why, why do people make a fuss when you actually 
is it where a give a dance that you've got from somebody else to somebody else's you've got? Oh, emotional, emotional, emotional ties. Who are these people that get worried about? Human beings with Who are they? Well, they're all the Yeah. Oh, I mean, <laughs> oh, well, let's see Julia. <laughs> 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 well, they're all the same. 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 Well, can I just say that um, my team in the States uh, adapted a tradition to our style and other people liked it and we were asked spontaneously to teach that style and some of our made up dances at a festival. And um, being foreman I was asked and I had to discuss it with my teammates and we had this big discussion and when the people who'd asked me saw us having this heavy discussion they withdrew the uh, request for a workshop, and we were relieved at the time because we didn't know how to deal with this and some of us thought we shouldn't and all of this. And we'd been going with this tradition about four years at the time. Well, by the following year, we couldn't have cared less. We would have been honored to give a workshop. It was a stage it's, in our growth yeah, it's that we felt involved. ownership. If you devise a dance for one of your number who died prematurely for cancer, and this is a dance that you devise as a, a memorial to that person, you are going to feel completely differently about somebody else dancing that dance than if you nicked it from the, the guy down the road and yeah. adapted Spotty it to your local dog. tradition. Yeah. Body dog. Right, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, um, it's, and, and it depends on the side. I mean, at the moment, most people um, in the side, after five or six years, will not have known the original person who died, and they couldn't care less whether it got given away or not. The people who knew the person for whom it was created, yeah may still object violently um, to the point of, of, of violence in the case of a border sign near us um, to... Uh, <laughs> which one? Oh no. Um, uh, <laughs> to, to, I mean, uh, against which people... Which men was that? Yes. Uh, to people who steal this dance. So I mean, it's, it's emotional involvement, not, not, not financial or, or, or gainful. And that, which is after a year, as you say. And as you said, I mean, we're actually in that position because we've got a dance that we created in, as a result of the suicide of somebody who used to dance with us. And nobody's stolen it, it's got its own due. If somebody did now, I think that it's, sufficient, it's four years ago, and it's sufficiently long, as you say, actually the majority of members of our, uh, our team actually didn't know the bloke who it's named after. Mm. So you've got to be realistic. If it happened the first year, then it might have felt yeah. Unfair. But also, now it's part of everybody's. It depends if you see it as a celebration it. or not. If you see it as a celebration of their life, yeah. then you'll be keen for as many people as possible to yes. dance it in memory of this person. If you see it as a memorial, it all depends on how you, you know, and the emotional ties you have with the dance. Isn't part of the problem actually knowing the history? If people don't know what's gone on behind it, then they're not going to put the same feelings into it. If they know it was in memory mm. of something, then it's better. And Actually, giving the people history with the dance is going to help. Well, but so often we're talking about we don't know where they've come from. As a technology. technical officer, do you have problems with sides giving you notations, if you ask? No, not so. There are some which are restricted, which are not for general release. You've got no going. You, you, you have to appeal to people's emotions when you're talking about dances. Um, I bought a record, uh, oh, sorry, tape, some months ago, and it had a, it had a tune on there which was called uh, a Morris tune, and it was Lollipop Man from the village of Annemarie in Oxfordshire. I like that. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to work that one out. I have to say, you know, I claim some ownership here. I made up the dance, the Lollipop Man from the village of Annemarie in Oxfordshire. So, how did this Irish musician get this tune? And, and, you know, yeah. it so it's only important to those people who are involved with it. it, it it's nice, yeah. and but it, it gives you a nice, warm feeling. But then, but then I went, I, uh, but then I went and saw Abbott's Bromley dance this year, and I saw Staffordshire Morrisman get up and dance uh, Lollipop Man from Edinburgh, and they did it differently than the way we do it. <laughs> This so whose dance was that? Well, of course, yeah. they're not Adderbury, yes. are they? Yes. Everybody does it in their own way. Well, we will be doing some Adderbury this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> not the way Adderbury, but Adderbury, I rob, do it. Right? Well, that will be fun.
What I find strange oh, sorry. is that... Well, sorry, I did the obvious thing. I went back right. to a sources. Yes. No? And sources, are, and they are able, you're able to interpret sources in a number of ways, right? And the problem with people who've reconstructed from manuscript is that they actually tend to latch on to the first thing that occurs and it works. Can I give you an example of that? About six, seven years ago, Federation organised, before I was in Ent's office, it was years ago, Federation organised a border workshop, which I and Andy Anderson were leading. And one of the things we did was give people a notation of a dance. As if it had, what, what had happened, we got someone who didn't know the dance to come down and record it. And then we topped and tailed it with a bit to sort of give it a bit of cod Victoriana to make people think it might be old. Handed it out. And the dance is quite explicitly six people in a straight line. We have one, one file. One team was so, one group of six was so wedded to the idea that if you've got six people, they've got to be in two rows of three, that they managed to warp the whole of the rest of the notation and came up with a dance that, once you'd allowed them to make that one mistake, fitted everything else they'd got written down in front of them. It's, it's, it's quite long, we got a new dance out there, who cares? But I mean, that was with a group of experienced people looking at a reasonably detailed notation. It must have happened more than once in the past. Yeah. I find the problem here is it's inhibiting it. So like when people from the Northwest say you mustn't do bake up, what you find is that in the garland dance work, nobody does quadrilles. Mm. The only, you know, bake up are the only people who do quadrilles. If you dance in a square formation, you must be copying bake up. You mustn't do that, therefore people don't do it. So that attitude has closed off a whole, to my mind, very valid area, you know, formation, type of dance, and so on. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't take any notice of that sort of criticism. Mm. In fact, I shan't take any notice of that sort of criticism the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know how I feel. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the things that I have created or you know, reassembled and things like this over the years, you know, you're welcome to them. Isn't it interesting yeah. that we're bothered? I mean, don't you think there's a reason why ownership is important in the world outside? It's because it's money. Well, there isn't actually any money in taxes on the whole. And yet we're, we're bothered about it. I mean, I, I'm just thinking it's about parallels. And it's going, I was thinking about theatrical parallels. And you get Gilbert and Sullivan um, societies who do nothing except Gilbert and Sullivan. And you get Shakespeare groups, and I don't think you get any other group that I can think of that specialises and says, right, you know, this is it, we are focusing. On the whole, the rest, certainly amateur dramatics, will say, well, okay, great, what are we going to do that's good? What are we going to do that works? It, it's, it, I mean, one of the things that strikes me is that Morris still doesn't really know whether it's today, doesn't know whether it's recreating some image of what they think the past was like, or is about performing and creating something that works as a performance in, uh, on the streets and then wherever they are dancing. That's the point, isn't it? It's on the streets. Evolve, whether we know that or not. <laughs> But well, surely the answer to that is that some teams are performing and creating and some teams feel that they're preserving something from the past. The Morris isn't a, a thing, it's a huge mass of diversity. Yeah, but the thing in common is that it's done for enjoyment and not profit. Surely my name is not what we like, but to entertain people. So that's squabbling here. Is it going to make much right. difference? Well, yeah. the <laughs> I, I take the attitude with the sides I'm associated with. If I see a good dance or a good concept, we pass it on. It's for the greater enjoyment of the people doing it to start with, right? And then to the greater enjoyment of the audiences that we meet, because we're actually dancing better, putting over better material. I mean, looking around here at the moment, you know. Um, Fleet have a jack store, two jack stores dances. Oh, oh, we've nicked oh, so a jack store dance. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
and so on. Just you know, um, all um, all yeah. <laughs> well, about yeah. And what's more, yeah, I think we're, we're actually proud that we've actually found these dancers which suit us so well. Yeah. Yeah. We've actually eliminated all the traditional dancers from our repertoire. Every one has been stolen from a reputable side. <laughs> We've actually got one from Weed Chief. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't that what you'd expect in comparison with, say, popular music, which somebody mentioned earlier on. If somebody does a cover version, you don't expect it to be note for note exactly the same arrangement as you know, somebody else's. You expect yeah. the person who's done the cover version to have done something a little bit different or given a bit of themselves to yes. it. And this is what I expect to do oh, with the point. That's that's the that's the process of evolution. Yeah. So he borrows the tune and, and carries on and modifies it a bit. But if a musician makes up a tune, that tune doesn't stay the same anyway. It evolves and mm. he gets bored of playing the same tune anyway. Absolutely. So he evolves it himself. So if you end up getting, going down multiple paths and eventually the tune's completely unrecognizable. The thing is people tune. don't just borrow or collect things. People take things to other places, like when you're at a university side, that you get people from all other different sides, and they just bring things, and the people at the university just accept them and say, oh right, okay, we've got a new tradition, that's fine. Yeah. And you just yeah. take it on, that, that it's been, that everything's being shared out, mm. and it just increases the repertoire in different parts of the country. Mm. Things aren't just being taken, they're being given too. Mm. Well, I personally don't advocate you know, there's something right. I think the folk world is one where we share. Because it's, it's, as I think Sally knows, I mean, I, I believe that every Morris dancer has a responsibility, every Morris dancer, past, present, and future. Mm. Which means that you all do the best you can. Yes. And if somebody's got a better dance or a better idea or a better presentation than you've got, then you really, if it suits you, you go for it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think it's Why a waste of good idea. Morris today is better than what's 40 years ago. You'd never have to use Smith on the television, would you? That's right. Do <laughs> 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 I think what's really sad is when somebody just, you know, comes to somebody, goes somebody else for ideas and just slavishly tries to copy. Absolutely. And what's really yes. nice when people say, that's a nice idea, and I'll take it into my own concept of what I want to do, you know, we want to do in our group. But somebody just slavishly copying some, something else, I think is really not sad. Yeah, that's a real problem with video, actually. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it so much in Morris, but I've, I mean, I used to music, play music for Beatle Crushers, who are a step dance team, and they have seen other step dance teams doing their choreography. The way they choreograph, choreograph steps, they've seen other teams doing the same choreography. Possibly because they think this is traditional dance, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, video has allowed that to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also stopped uh, developing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Well, there's one traditional team, it's it's sort of The dance was evolving gradually, and someone filmed them. And now every year, they watch the film, so they get it right. The fact that if you take the film the year before, it would have been different. They, they haven't emotionally absorbed. The point I want to make about the tradition is that for good reason the collectors went to the old men and old men are people who are satisfied with the repertoire. They've got a fixed repertoire the way they like to. You meet them nowadays. Right, old men. Right. What they ignore the fact is that the Morris, the Morris is a young person's tradition. Right? And young persons you know, are creative. And the Sharps and all the collectors since have ignored the creative part of the Morris because they thought it wasn't traditional. You know, when they collected folk songs, they didn't go for the people who were writing songs, they went for the people who remembered the old ballads and so on, in case these ballads were lost forever. They were perfectly right in what they did, but they were wrong in ignoring the creative element. And I believe the Morris world at the moment, and what I see of it, in fact, has recaptured this creative bit. It's no longer real thinks that, in fact, the tradition is what it was, and that's all it can be, and you mustn't change a note in the tune or a step in the dance. When I started Morris, you could go to a ring meeting instructional, and that's what you were told. You know, you play the tune exactly the way it's written down. Which is very really strange, really, because the only tunes you had were actually written for piano. <laughs> They were 
changed. You just I, can, I can remember David Welty stopping the Friday night dance session at a ring meeting because he because people were doing something wrong. <laughs> I mean, this is the mass dancing Friday informal Friday night dance. Oh, yeah. Inside, he stopped it. Yeah. Sorry, dropping I remember <laughs> in a, 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 in a meeting where Bert Cleaver went up late in the evening and said, no, no, he and his friend were actually going to jig, do a jig properly. After, you know, all the evening having a wonderful time. It really killed the atmosphere. I mean, yeah, I've, 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 I've actually had the phone call. It was a few years ago now, but there was somebody who once rang me up to say, how far forward do you move in a ducklet and foot up? You know, yeah. what's, what's, the, what's the right distance? What's the stopping distance? Is that not Sally? Ducklet and foot up? You've had one more recently. Long as a piece of string. Roy's garland workshop last year? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had one for your garland workshop. I don't remember the exact bit of it, but exactly how should you do the step? Oh, it's a stepping from one of the dances. And I, you know, exactly what was it supposed to be? Oh, I didn't feel the woman, the woman involved didn't feel she could phone you up about it, so she phoned Sally up about it to ask her. <laughs> no. Well, usually when somebody does that, does that to me, I say, how do you do it? And I say, that's terribly interesting. Do you mind if I write it down? <laughs> which is not very good, but it's got imaginative ideas without realising it. Do <laughs> you actually say, it ought to go like this? Or do you actually say, no, it's wonderful, continue, then you can't, just get it better? Yes. Yes, because you can always get better, but more imagination is a difficult attribute to provide. But I, I tend to, to, to disagree in a sense that, for me, when I'm watching a Morris side, if they're doing something different, imaginative and new, that almost always makes them better, yeah. because yeah. They, they, unless they are really, really crap at their <laughs> physical, <laughs> physical coordination, simply doing something different gives it a lift. To me, as an experienced Morris dancer, um, admittedly to Joe Schmo public, they may say, yeah. well, no, I can't tell what this is. But as an experienced Morris dancer, I, I enjoy that. I find, I think, oh, yeah, that's you're, a judging, good you're judging quality only on your own standards. Well, how else is that the judging? <laughs> There's 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 no, there is no definitive standard for what is good. It, it, um, oh, oh, well, oh, I was going to say beauty yeah. is in the eye of the beholder, but I disagree with that statement, Mason. so I won't make it. Um, I think there is, a, 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 there is an agreeable standard of what is good, but then there are optional extras on top that make the difference between being good and being better and being well, brilliant. Un unfortunately, one of the big problems I think the Morris today is that people have an idea of excellence that is misplaced. And what they should be doing is doing what they do well, whether it's, whether it's excellent or not. All they should be doing is performing well together. And it doesn't matter whether it's 50 foot in the air or Sorry, I, I think I think you're 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 confusing um, athleticism with excellence. Uh, in in that particular example you give, if they're doing what they no, do well, no, that is that excellence. An, no, no, I use that as an illustration, not not uh, not as a not as a, uh, okay. a a point of detail. I'm only saying that what you should agree in your groups is only to be together. But that's yeah. your opinion. <laughs> no, I, I actually would that agree would with you. Bampton many years. We came up with the, the fame, we? we came up with a theory of what was good mm. and what was bad based on, on a, a strict scientific principle, which is if you're good, the public give you pound coins and fifty yes. p's. If you're bad, vitamins and vitamins. Now oh, this is an interesting no. one about. Um, <laughs> isn't it, isn't it? Oh. Um, okay. So if we were to um, uh, if we were to pander to modern fashion um, and not be Morris dancers, but be street jugglers, be mime artists, shave our heads, um, and do all the fire eaters, we would be more excellent than a Morris side because by definition. Do they get more? You seem yes. Yes. Oh yes. 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 <laughs> you talk to. I mean, you talk to. It's it's easier to be a professional 
know, yeah, treat like entertainer one. than be a professional one. It's like barber in tomorrow for the same Well, that's what I didn't, that's what I said. Forget a barber in the first week. Do it as a pirate, as a two. Perhaps they're just better at approaching audiences than those of us. I'm not sure yeah, but the way the are really too many. That's a lot of public. Yeah. 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 Going down, going down a side road. So when we talked last time about the banter of the Morris, we identified there's something about the Morris that these street performers don't have. Right? There's something about the occasion that the Morris generates. The reason why the Morris team will get invited to a wedding or a celebration or a fair and things like this in a way that street entertainers don't get invited. It's possibly that we're. The ultimate line isn't how much money we collect. So we, we would go out and do it. Oh no, I, I didn't, didn't think that was the reason for doing it. it Excellent is the only. In 1924, when the Travelling Morris went round the Cotswold, they were universally thought the best side that year. Because <laughs> <laughs> there were no others. You know, but when you're a crummy summer exactly that nobody else is going to, to compare you with, you are the Morris dancer for that world. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do it with enthusiasm and fun, we all know how acceptable that sort of Morris is. Absolutely. No matter how crappy the technique is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the important thing is for, for the average Public Morris dancer is, is that actually they enjoy it. Yes. Um, whether that enjoyment comes through we are the best or we're dancing as well as we can, which might be the case for some one songs, but they will not keep doing it if they don't enjoy it. And not everybody sees that in terms of, of professionalism. I mean, there's a lot of people do the Morris because enjoy. it's approachable. It doesn't require you can get away and enjoy it without having to have professional high standards. It's much more fun if you get I agree. There was well, a, possibly, no possibly from us, but I'm not so sure. No, let's be that. An interesting experience two years ago when when um, Curtinton and Sherborne together danced at a festival in France, and Kest even turned up and danced as well. There are some ex Kest even dancers here, and she's disappeared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, the people in France couldn't understand why we didn't have women in our team. And couldn't understand why we weren't entertaining. <laughs> and Curtinton were not entertaining. And everybody thought that Cascade was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. The fact that they do what they do is not a thing. But we got taken out of the show performances. Curtinton and Sherborne got taken out of the show performances because we were not entertaining. Absolutely. And cast even were put in. They were polite to Abra and we weren't exotic enough. That's yeah. the phrase they used. When I went they take it seriously. When I went with Kenneth to Provence and we were part of a local festival and we started to go on to the uh, football pitch with six men in musician. <laughs> one slipped and twisted his ankle, another one had been drunk too much spirit, so he was drunk and fell over. And we got like onto the middle of the pitch with not enough people to actually dance, so we grabbed the local women's display team and we did its ancient English Morris dancers as the Valita and Gay Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> and the locals thought it was wonderful. <laughs> people enjoying it and so on, a lot of it is whether you actually show the audience that you're enjoying it. Absolutely. If you're just enjoying yeah. it but well, when I hate the audience then you're never going to be any good. Dead 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 but that's, that's different. different. That's that's different. different. That's because different. I think actually that if you face if you face reality, Morris dancing is really not enjoyable for most of the audience no, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you go out to the local pub, We've all you have a great deal better. of difficulty getting any <laughs> Good, because at least we smile. <laughs> People think we're enjoying ourselves, and if they think you're enjoying yourself, they tend to, to be more responsive to you. Oh. But um, yeah, typically, let's face it, Morris dancing is rather interesting. In in a in a day in a, in an age of three dimensional virtual reality games and and and, and, and vi all the video input you can take, Morris dancing is really quite boring. Could be a good video game if you can get it right. <laughs> I've got so copyright. Why are we going to do it in front of other people then? Self-satisfaction. 
We do it because we enjoy it. I think this conversation, I'm going to try and wind it up for the moment. But we come round to something which I believe, and I think the Morris is about performance. It's not about history. It's not about masculinity or feminists or any of these sort of things. It's about people actually performing both to themselves and in the right sort of circumstances in front of an audience. And there was a lot of pleasure that both sides, as it were, both the dancers and the audience get from the performance. And I wish we'd concentrate when we have things like Morris Matters and things like that, we concentrate on performance issues. You know, what is it about? What's enjoyable? What are we going to do? And, like this. and not about the history and things like this. It's much more important what we wear and how we look mm. and how we behave mm. and things like this. Where's the community? Where's the what? Where's the community? It's all watching. What, what community? community? It's all watching the Some people think that's we, important. My side lives in a community. End of story. If it wasn't the community we are in, what's the point of doing it at all? What Morris dancers do when they're not dancing is sit around with beer and argue. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he do. That's what you should argue. You get half a dozen employees of any You're one company in the company wrong sort of in a bar, you have exactly the same discussion. My size when they're not actually dancing are pregnant. Where? <laughs> Roy, why is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's all wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's difficult to prescribe the way you to behave as not come over and show because some of the best Morris I've seen are some of the most enjoyable things I've been in have had spontaneous events where you yes. use some of the props that happen to be around. But yes. I mean, it's very difficult to prescribe and say this is the way you should be. Yes. Apart from saying yes. that you should be spontaneous. The thing is that what about the sign like Shropshire bedrooms? When you see them, they are a fantastic <laughs> show. And yet I wouldn't want to behave like that at all. And I wouldn't want my side to behave like they do. But what they do, um, seven champions. I mean, I took my mother and father to see to meet the seven champions, you know. And I love the story because they sat there absolutely enthralled for an hour. And when they came out, they said it was such a change for Morris now. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying about being spontaneous, one of the best bits of Morris I have seen, or best bits of street theatre I've seen, sort of ever, was last year at Sydney, not this year, last year, that spot did, champs did in the Market Square. Oh, yes. And they go through the big explanation of the, the back of pipes so over the two volunteers they've got. And they, they look and then Chris Rose says, But of course I'm injured, I can't do it and starts looking for the other Molly. And Dave is sitting there, cross legged, with the biggest pizza you could buy in Sydney <laughs> open in this box, takeaway pizza in front of him, just about to dive into it. Borrowed from a little girl. <laughs> Stole it. Stole it. Stole it. She was most upset. <laughs> but she did get it back eventually. But the point I was talking to about it afterwards, and I said, presumably you don't practice and plan that. He says, no, but you've got, if you're going to do something that looks that spontaneous, you really have to be aware of all the possibilities yeah. all the time. So it isn't really spontaneous at all. Yeah. I mean, if it looks spontaneous, it's probably... Advantage. Yes, but you've got to be aware that you've got to do that, and that actually requires it means you always need to know that you're on show and you've got to perform all the time you're out. Mm -hmm. well, Seven champions are helped by the fact that yes. when you're in costume, you know you're in costume. Yes, we've just yes, had the same, we we've, we've just started a uh, board team down in the southwest, and a lot of people have come from other teams, and one of the problems we have in some of the other teams is that they don't think that when I'm in kit, I'm something different. When you put black face on them, it's bleeding obvious that they are something different and they're realising it. And it's beginning to have paybacks on the other teams. They're beginning to realise that yeah. actually wearing yeah. clogs or bells yeah. or whatever also makes you different. Yeah. And, yeah. and you have to be... You have... I'm very conscious of that. Our family, mama's sides, mm. you know, in various places. When you're wearing a mama's costume, there's no way you can disappear into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Not without causing consternation. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, sorry to bring Jan in, but 
Um, one of the things I felt in the States on my rare visits to meet the Morris is there's a different attitude towards kit. It's regalia. You know, it isn't something you just put on in the morning and wear all day until it gets black and filthy, which is the average English Morris when it used to do it when I was much more active. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I was waiting for you to bring me in. You were talking about the States, but that's not necessarily me, not anymore. Um, but kit is regalia? Meaning? Well, they, they seem to take a much more serious, in my experience, a serious attitude of when they're wearing, when they're wearing the kit. You know, and they're quite, they tend to be out of it quite quickly. I have to say that I think, from my experience, it's just like here in that there is such a variety of Morris teams and such a variety of individuals on each team that you could have one person showing up in horribly ratty kit and, and wearing his bells or her bells into the restaurant afterwards and showing off, you know, that they're a Morris dancer, and somebody else who preserves the kit very carefully, and somebody else who wouldn't dare wear it anywhere because she doesn't want to show off the fact that she's a Morris dancer or look like, look like a Wally, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, there's, it's so diverse. Right. It, yeah. It's hard to say. That's my answer. I must admit, it's one thing that I've, since I've stopped being doing Cotswold teams, I've never really understood this business about when you all go and have your dinner in the evening and you're dancing to yourselves because you enjoy it, you're still wearing your kit. It's actually much more sensible to change to something that was more comfortable. No, that's it's not Morris. No, it's not Morris. Not. Uh, it's, hmm. I'd say, <laughs> interesting, because I would have thought that that it would be much more difficult for men in ordinary clothing to be dancing with each other of an evening. And, and Morris Kit is actually an essential part of the, of the social setting for the evening. One of the problems, of course, is that having been in a, a Northwest team with the Ritz, they can't join in anyway. Yes. And the kit isn't actually comfortable enough sure. to want to sit Absolutely. around, no. so that, that starts start changing agree. it. Um, yeah. It's something that I haven't, that I don't find comfortable. I, I'd much rather change. But if you're, I mean, but certainly the few ales that I've been to, you're in kit because it's a competitive element as well. You're there to show off. When you do your own dance, you're showing off because you're better than everybody else there and you want to prove it. And when you're doing the other dances, well, you're, uh, you know, you're getting down to their level because, you know, these guys need to, to be shown down. <laughs> that maybe it's There's a certain amount, time, certain amount of competition involved, is what I think. But no, I'll, I'll go along what you said, that certainly in the 60s with Bampton, and I can think of occasion with Abingdon, that once you've done the formal show you've got to do, you may dance in the evening, but it would be half kit. You know, they'd take the waistcoat off, or take the wardrobe off, and things like this, you know, you couldn't change completely. But you dress in such a way to make it clear that you weren't actually the formal side anymore. You were there just to enjoy yourself. In the early years of the Marlboro Morris sale, your kit was your ticket to uh, the feast on Saturday night, and that separated performers from their guests. Yeah. And I remember being a guest and sitting out in the rain, and everybody went in because they had mm. kit, and I didn't. And that, that changed very quickly, and their whole policy about guest change, too. Mm. But the idea of going in in your, in your kit you know, for this feast was suddenly very distasteful to everybody <laughs> after after doing it for about five years. But isn't it, isn't it like dressing? Isn't it like dressing up in, in you know in, in bow tie and, and dinner jacket? Yeah. You dress Not up. Not if you've been dancing in it all day. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point is, it's an event for which you dress up, and this time you dress up in kit rather than dressing up. In a, in a bow tie, that which might you wouldn't have been go in, in jeans and a t-shirt because it's not appropriate. It's, it's an entire yeah. social context. That, that might have been part of it. People Federation go in jeans things, now and it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And some so wear so evening now you go to an evening want. dinner party like and example, you wouldn't be all wearing <laughs> dicky bows. Mm. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, but see, but some do wear that and that's fine that's too. That's fine too. So it's the, the whole it's scene's really changed. Broad. The whole scene's changed. It really has changed a lot since the early years. It was a stage again that they needed. But the main thing is the difference in attitude. See, the early teams never really went out to entertain and perform in the way that we do now. They were just keeping up the Morris, you know, so a bit of the fun. <laughs> and the, and the kit is part of that. So, like, if you were doing Morris, you did it in kit. kit. And doing it, dancing in front of each other, 
you know, to a certain extent, is not that much different from dancing mm. to one man and a dog or dancing in public where you're all looking Damn inwards, much, yeah. Yeah. ignoring everything yeah. else that's Absolutely going on outside. Right. Right. And so why not do it in full kit? I mean, it's, to do it as a practice defeats, is, is not the genuine thing because you're having a feast, you're inviting the other teams, you're doing yeah. the proper Morris, you're not the practicing. Surely you're still performing. So the Federation's never been part of that system Mm. And we're much more into performance and entertaining now, which isn't at all the same as the older attitude. It's interesting. No, they don't see themselves as performing, though, do they? Well, they don't. Yeah. They're still. I mean, they're still that's, in that vein. They do I mean, the dance. That's what. Well. But I dance. think they're changing a bit. Yeah, I think you know. There's still a lot though that haven't changed. Yeah. You know, the, the heyday of the um, yeah. wing star feet. It's, it's, it's a minority now. Well, it's no, interesting. No, that that is still there. Like, like, this year. We went to an OM workshop a couple of years ago. The one that you did. You and John did the Sherborne one up in Manchester. You did. Oh, yes. You, it's 50. <laughs> and, um. Well, that wasn't at all feast like. Oh, but you, you didn't stay for the evening. Oh. In the evening, everybody got their kit out. Having been at a workshop all day in jeans and t shirts, in the evening, everybody put their kit on in order to do dances. They brought their kit with them. They brought their kit with them. And only about mm. half the dances they did were Morris dances. Agreed. The rest of the time they were in Cady dances. Well, we found this sort of vacant bazaar. Was that because they're trying to emulate the wing thing? Presumably. I mean, I don't know. You'd have to talk to Tony or someone. It's like off. trying to copy without actually understanding the reasons of why they have it. Chip off the old, their, their ale is... That just their wind drop is a different variety. Right. Right. <laughs> you arrive at six o'clock, yeah. you do some dancing, you have a meal, you do some water. Just, it's mm. just like that. Some people like that. I like those, I like that, aren't they? <coughs> no, that's a lot, not anymore. anymore. I think a lot more ales are private dues nowadays, you know, individual invitations and stuff. But I mean, I wouldn't dream of running an ale or going to an ale except in kit. I mean, to Morris events, I'd be in kit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't dream of eating dinner. Well, if it was a cane, well, it's a different matter. But if it's a Morris ale, that is an evening but event. Normally you go we would eat in kit, we would dance in kit, we would spend the entire yeah. evening in kit. But that's because you'll, you go along to now normally representing a site. Absolutely. I've had the problem over the years, and in fact I've been invited in my own right, as it were. But yeah. like a and guest I'm, at a dinner party, the, the, the guest of honour, it doesn't matter what the guest of honour wears, because no, they are I the guest of honour. I very often more standard suit, as yeah. it were, and situation oh. like that. Is that the Andy Pandy suit? <laughs> <laughs> I must be getting a bit the old. Andy Andy Andy. I only once succeeded in wearing it into the office. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but you still got the... Uh, the mistake the was, not I was dressed in it, but they expected <laughs> Father Christmas. <laughs> because he's into things like that, yes. Yeah. Right, next topic. Yeah, well, what, have we, what conclusions have we reached? Well, like well, the short the summary. This, week, this weekend is going to run the way it intended. And we will have some grand rip-offs tomorrow and Sunday. The dancers very people. And uh, I should apologise beforehand to the people I recognise whose dancers I've got. <laughs> but surely, surely the way that the discussion has gone, there's no need to apologise because we all think it's quite no, okay. I should oh, no, actually, can I, can I make a point, actually? In stealing. most other areas, um, acknowledgement is considered... There's a thin line between theft, plagiarism and general bad manners and legitimacy. And that thin line is acknowledgement, which was pointed yeah. out oh, earlier on. Oh, you shouldn't apologise for acknowledgement. Uh -uh. acknowledged if for, if it's acknowledged, acknowledged, you're absolutely right. You know, to say this dance... I saw this dance from 
so and so at an occasion when they were they were looking whilst I was yeah. watching. Mm. That that to me is legitimate. That is an expression of of of, of it reasonable display. Well, for it's most context, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's public. You don't say that. No, but it makes public, it better. No, why not? Well. You say it comes from some obscure village in the no, Cotswold they've never damn well heard of. No, I don't. Of. No, that, that is true. Cotswold. So it's a bit of a mistake to start with. <laughs> some side. Some side. If, you're if you're teaching it, then I do say if I'm teaching well, if you're it, teaching, I do you say the context, where it's come from, yeah. you know, the lineage. And I mean, I actually say, you know, I learned this stuff from you. Well, if I say my proudest moment in my song is that I saw John Glace's well, women's side, the country side, doing a, a, practicing a dance. And I taught it to Fleet Morris. And next year when I danced it with them, we did that dance to them. And they stood in amazement and hadn't realised I'd seen them practicing. The point is that it means something to us. And you're familiar with the place, and you just you're just completely steeped in it. We can't really identify with that feeling, so they might feel that somebody else is just a complete travesty of what they yeah. are. I think many of the Northwest teams feel like that because they're, they're very I'm much into their community and what they do, and they're very proud of it. And it, yeah. it, it, their identity. That, is very and that, but that is that is a very legitimate not. feeling for them. But I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like cricket, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> we may not. have it's invented cricket, cricket, but the West Indies have thrashed us <laughs> for years and years <laughs> and years, <laughs> and they're not going to stop doing that. It's At the end of the day, they've had a run of luck. <laughs> so, so I, I appreciate. It. I appreciate the concept, but I, but I, I, I seriously believe there's nothing to do. Yeah, but five, five years ago, I did discussions at Sidmouth, which were extremely good sessions. We did we did different subjects every day, and Roy made the best comment I've ever heard him say, which is he said Pretty good day. many things, said many things over the years, on, and he said most people dance for strangers. Yeah. That's not always true, though. And there are times when people are lucky enough not to dance with strangers. And it's a, and it is a totally feeling. different feeling. Yeah. Uh, it's it's absolutely what having done get with their regular tours, I used to get when I was with them. You, you actually dance with people, I'd seen them for 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. And it's what we get with our village mummies, because it's the same 200 people turn it every boxing day. Yeah. Yes, it's different. You've got to spend half a lifetime yes. working on a situation like that. And most more sides, the people don't last long enough to do Roy, that. an example of that, bear in the pace They've now got to the stage where they basically do the same tour every year, every year, every year. Some, their Palm Sunday tour, the last public.